As a kid, I was very curious. I'm grateful to have parents that really encouraged uh, both my loves. So I had a love for art and a love for science. My mom took us to every museum, science fair, science program that she could take us to, particularly ones that uh, were free. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, so just whatever she could take us to to spark that curiosity. Some people don't know that like Charles Darwin, Jan John James Audubon, that they did their own drawings. So they know them as scientists, they don't often know them as artists. The people that do know, they're like, oh, scientific illustration. Like Charles Darwin did his Finch drawings, or like John James Audubon. But a lot of times people don't associate those scientists as artists as well. But for the scientific illustration, what you're trying to achieve, as you can see here, is a bit of your style, but it still needs to be accurate. These are all endangered or threatened plants found at Ash Meadows. So that's here in Nevada. Um, it's a high plant diversity because it's so special. It's like an oasis in the desert. And so because of that, you have a rare flora that occurs there. And so what I did for a publication I was on was illustrate some of those plants. So while you can tell that this has my style, these are drawn to scale. And that's what sets scientific illustration apart. You're bringing the observer down to the level of the unseeable. So, Accuracy is what you're going for. This is Desert Daughter. It's a parasitic plant where I did decide to add some color because it does look like that in the field. It's this bright orange mess that looks like silly string and it's a parasite. So it adheres to other plants. And then this is the California gold poppy. I've decided and that's where scientific com illustration comes in is here's a bud. Here's a seed pod, here's a flower. Whereas if you were taking a picture and using that, you might not get all three of those life stages at the same time. So that's why in medical and botanical guides, a lot of the time illustrations are still used because you're able to convey texture a lot better. You're able to create composites like this. We have multiple uh, drawings all at the same time. When botanists go out and do botanical inventories, so that means they are trying to document every plant species found in a certain area. In my case, the project was documenting every plant species found at Tule Springs Fossil Beds National Monument. And so that involved going out and we take what's called a plant press. The idea is to collect specimens of every plant species, and we call these vouchers. So they end up being a permanent record. So when we press these species, we do want to think about the composition of the page, um, because they then get turned into the formal voucher. So this is what it'll look like in the herbarium. So we always take duplicates. So this is one set. This is gonna go to the Nevada State Museum here uh, at the Springs Preserve. And that's why we did the mounting ourselves. The second set went up to UNR. It's always great to do them a favor and to think about the composition on the page because it's gonna end up 
being put on a page. And if you're living dangerously, you can also press cacti species. It involves filleting with a fillet knife and because um, you want to get cross sections and try to scoop out as much of the innards as you can. Not getting too botanical here, but otherwise it's just not going to dry. When you take them to a formal herbarium, you don't take them mounted like this, they mount. But when you're, and I'll show you when we press, you have to think about how it's gonna finally look here. And if you take them crap, essentially, they're like, so the curator up there was like, oh my God, bless you. Like, <laughs> and that's the artist. Yeah. So what I love about DRI is, so rather than force me to compartmentalize into one direct avenue, I can branch out, pursue multiple interests, and be able to expand what I do and my skill set with their encouragement.